Hi, Dan here, Skewering Magazine. Right, today I want to do something a little bit different, and today I want to ask a question of you, the viewer. And the question is quite simply, how fast do you want to go? And that would be your cruising speed and your top speed. And I'm talking about when you're out on the open road uh, and you want to get a few miles on your belt, enjoy a ride, uh, what is the general speed that you like to cruise along at? And then if you meet some traffic or a difficult, you know, a headwind or a, a hill or something, and you want to sort of tank on a bit and have a little bit extra speed for a, a maneuver of some kind, what's the maximum speed that you would like your scooter to be able to go up to to hit? And I'd like you to post your answers in the comment section below, because I'm genuinely interested um, to try and build up a bit of a picture <clears throat> of what the sort of general consensus is. And there's no right answer and no wrong answer. I'm just interested in people's personal opinions. The reason I'm asking this is because I've been test riding um, quite a number of scooters recently and uh, a number of them have been quite powerful scooters and quite quick scooters. And I'm seeing more and more um, tuners, um, engine builders, uh, component providers, complete engine solution providers, all becoming more and more increasingly involved in these new boundaries and parameters of figures which were previously just unheard of. And back in the day, you might have had a lot of scooters which were just high teens in terms of their power output. And then if somebody got into sort of low 20s or mid 20s, you know, that could be deemed to be quite a powerful scooter and sort of 30 was like a big number. And now guys are well into the 30 horsepower region, they're into the 40 horsepower region, and some guys have got scooters which are now in the 50 horsepower region, which I just find mind blowing. And I mean, and it's great. It's great that tuners, you know, that we've got the ability to do this. It's great that people have got the um, the, the enthusiasm and the passion to produce these things. So I'm, I'm all for it. But I'm just intrigued as to, in terms of the general population, how many people are really interested in this. Um, because I think that there's a bit of a bell-shaped curve when it comes to what people want. And I think there are outliers at each end of that. And I think, so, you know, at one end of the spectrum, you might have people who will say, oh, to be quite honest, you know, I'm happy if I'm just tootling around at 30, 40, 50 miles an hour, and that's quick enough for me. And that's fine, you know, what, what suits you suits you. I think at the other end of the spectrum, there will be outliers who will say, look, quite frankly, if it can't hit 80, 90, 95 mile an hour, I'm not interested, you know. Uh, I like to be tanking on at 90. Fine, if you want to get on the motorway and do 90 mile an hour on a scooter or whatever, you know, that's that's great. Um, but I probably believe that the largest majority of people would say something along the lines of somewhere between sort of 50 to 70 miles an hour is going to be your largest majority of people um, for their cruising speed and perhaps a small number of people want a little bit beyond that for when they really, you know, need to make a bit of progress on a long journey, or perhaps if they need to overtake something. So that's my sort of belief on the matter, but I want to try and get some answers from you, which is why I would like you to put your answers in the in the comment section, so that I can really get a feel for what it is that the vast majority of people want. So I know that people's answers will be different in relation to what machines they ride, who they ride with, and what the majority of their riding is done. If it's just a guy locally commuting, that will be a different answer to somebody doing a lot of motorway mileage. But so just bob your answers in the comment section and let's see what people say. But it also made me think, do people generally know what horsepower is required from a machine to hit a given speed? And it's quite surprising, really. Um, you don't actually need that much horsepower to go quickly up to a certain point but it's towards the latter end of the speed spectrum that things really start to ramp up now about 12 years ago um, there was a thread on scooter Rotica forum and where an image was posted which was very similar to this one and um it was posted by a well-known scooter tuner who was involved in racing and sprinting and had a lot of data um, and used was able to use some software and input his vast array of data in order to come up with a fairly accurate assessment of what a Lambretta scooter would do. Um, and it's very similar to Vespers for that matter, but there's some few small differences, but um, he was able to come up with this graph of what a scooter speed, you know, uh, would, what, a what speed a scooter would hit with a given horsepower. And it's, it's quite accurate in the real world. 
Um, now, obviously, there are small fluctuations for different riders, different riding conditions, different brands of scooter with different frontal areas. But largely speaking, this does bear out in the real world. Now, what you'll see on the graph is a blue line, which is the exponential curve. And that curve represents the drag increase as you get faster and therefore the increase in horsepower required to hit a specific speed. Um, in the red is an example of a scooter. And you'll see from that power curve, um, it will bounce through gears one, two, three, and four. And then it will rev out in fourth gear and the power curve will meet the drag curve and that will indicate the theoretical top speed of that scooter. And for that scooter, the theoretical top speed was 100 mile an hour, and in real world terms, it went out and it did it. So that's fine if you wanna be a 100 mile an hour guy, but then you have to ask, you know, what does everybody else want? Um, and there is no right or wrong answer, but we do know that guys especially seem to love to chase numbers. Um, and I would get it all the time at Scooter Erotica when I would be doing some dyno sessions or tuning and a guy would come in and say, oh, you know, I've only got 15 horsepower, all my mates are faster than me, can, can you sort of bump it up a bit? And he'd go out with 20, 21 horsepower um, and he was happy with that. Next week, his mate from the club would come back, come in and say, oh, you did Dave's scooter the other week, um, you're giving him sort of 20, 21 horsepower, can you give me sort of 23, 24? <laughs> so guys can get caught up in this just as long as they're a little bit faster than the rest of their club mates and you, it's a kind of a never ending cycle and I saw a lot of people do that. The other one is the manufacturers that they all want to sell their stuff which is understandable, they're in business. So if this guy's saying well we've got a 30 horsepower engine, this guy wants, no, well we've got a 35 one, we've got a 250, we've got a 260, we've got a 280 and you sort of think well where does this end and in the real world what is the requirement for this? Now, at the other end of the spectrum to the speed, you've got um, a representation on the graph, which um, it, it, this is a second variation of the graph, and it shows you that it actually needs around nine horsepower, nine to 10 horsepower to hit around circa sort of 60 miles an hour. Um, it'll get there slowly, it'll take a while to build up, but that theoretical top speed is perfectly possible with as little as nine horsepower. Um, now, if you're riding and you're in fourth gear and you're hitting hills and headwinds and you've got luggage or you want to accelerate a bit faster in future, that's when people start to say, oh, well, let me put on a carbon pipe and now it hits 12 horsepower. Now they've got a bit more acceleration, a bit more top speed, a bit more pulling power. You'll see something like a TL200 um, with around 16 horsepower at the back wheel, and that can now hit sort of speeds of mid 70s, mid to high 70s. Um, Acceleration wise, being a fairly light scooter, it'll keep up with the GTS 300 through the acceleration. And it's only when you really hit 70 mile an hour that the GTS will just start to maybe creep a little bit away from it and might literally have three or four, you know, maybe two or three miles per hour more than the TL200. And that's because they're closely matched on horsepower. The TL200 is usually around 16 horsepower at the back wheel. A GTS 300 is 18. A lot of people think they're 21. That's a figure quoted by Piaggio at the crank. The actual true back wheel, rear wheel number for most GTS 300s is around 18 horsepower. But that is enough to get it up to around, depending on the rider and the conditions, around 80 miles an hour. On a bad day, it could be high 70s. On a good day, it could be low 80s. But um, around 80 miles an hour, 18 horsepower is all you need. Beyond that, you've got, um, you know, the, the speeds that we discussed earlier, you know, the 100 miles an hour. And I know from my own personal experience, having, you know, covered, you know, especially recently having run quite a lot of fast scooters, I'm actually really happy just cruising along on the open road, taking it all in and enjoying myself, fairly relaxed around 65 miles an hour. If I get on the motorway, I want to be going maybe 70 miles an hour, just make sure I'm keeping up with the traffic. And I do like to know that I've got maybe a little bit more in the bag if I need to overtake something. Um, you know, it's nice to have that in reserve. Outside of that, I'm actually not that bothered about going anything beyond that. And so I have been guilty of buying into the numbers game because I'm building this TS1240 to myself. And for all intentions, you know, all intent purposes, I've been absolutely hell bent on saying, oh yeah, I'm gonna get 30 horsepower out of this with a Clubman pipe, blah, blah, blah. And then I actually thought to myself when I was out test riding the other day and I thought, how often do I do those speeds where I need that sort of power? And the answer isn't very often because I'll be honest with you, I actually don't like going for, for every one mile an hour I go above around 70, 75 mile an hour on a scooter, I become increasingly unhappy that something tragic is about to happen. Whether it's the engine's gonna blow up, a wheel's gonna fall off, or somebody's gonna pull out on me, or I'm gonna hit a pothole. And the ride becomes just 
for every mile an hour over 75 I go, the ride just becomes that bit, little bit more unenjoyable. But when I'm cruising along anywhere between 55 and 75, I'm happy as Larry. Um, so I just thought, maybe I'll rein it back in. And that also then translates into cost and wear and tear on items, because with lower horsepower amounts, you can actually get away with, you know, I don't need the 500 quid clutch, the 250 quid clutch will do, and, you know, so on and so forth. And it reflects through your suspension, your brakes, your tyre, everything. Um, so I think personally, having thought about this a lot more recently, uh, and I haven't really assessed it before, um, I think for me personally, probably 18 to 24 horsepower is probably the sweet spot for what I personally require in order to accelerate at the speed, you know, the rate I want to, to hit the top speed I want to, to have the cruising speed I want to, to have the, uh, the balance of the good components, but not outlandishly expensive components. And all around, somewhere between 18 to 24 horsepower is gonna give me all the power and all the speed and, and, and everything I need. So I think that's my sweet spot. Other guys might be, like I said earlier, might be, or if it doesn't do 90 mile an hour and it hasn't got 35 horsepower, I don't wanna know. And other guys might be, quite frankly, nine horsepower and 60 mile an hour sounds just fine to me. There is no right, no, no right answer, no wrong answer. But I am genuinely interested into uh, to get the feedback from you so pop your answer in the comments what is your perfect sort of cruising speed that you generally do and what is the top speed that you would like your scooter to do and if you've sort of got involved with the power outputs that i've been discussing and you want to put in sort of what you think you like as your theoretical power output pop that in too but pop your answers in the uh, in the comment section and uh, that's all for now see you on the next video